So, here we are, it's Advent. We are waiting. I'd almost prefer that we just sat in silence for ten minutes here, waiting, instead of a sermon maybe. But, in fact, it is my solemn duty to preach, and honestly, I think I'd find it hard to restrain myself for that long. So, we'll just have a few little words. Waiting. We had lots of waiting on our retreat at Worth Abbey last weekend. In fact, the whole point of the retreat was to try and create some space where we could stop and wait and listen and think and pray. Instead of constantly doing, we don't not do very often. We're doing. And to not do can even become a form of doing. So to try to not doing, I'm getting my grammar mixed up here, (laughs) to not do without doing is an extra challenge, a kind of meta challenge. So we did our best at Worth Abbey on Friday evening. Watch me as I get into my pocket here. Right, this is what we did. Friday evening, we took our mobile phones out of our pockets. We switched them off and we put them into a plastic box which got locked in a cupboard in my bedroom for the next 48 hours. Yeah? Some of you looking absolutely horrified. 48 hours. And in fact, maybe I shouldn't have told you because those of you who are going to come on the March retreat now will probably smuggle in a backup smartphone yeah? and hand in the fake ones. But it helped, I think. It did help. What are we waiting for, though? You can wait aimlessly. What are we waiting for in general and this Advent? Well, just to give the simple theological list so you've got it, three things. In this season of Advent, traditionally, it's a time of waiting for Christ to come at the end of time in glory and judgment. And that's the emphasis for the first week or two. It's eschatological. It's about the eschaton, the end, the judgment, the culmination of all things. Secondly, we're waiting, obviously, for Christ to come at Christmas. It's it's just a few weeks. The crib will be up soon. Big controversy this week in the house. We put the decorations up. Some people saying, oh, you can't put the Christmas decorations up. It's liturgically incorrect. We didn't. We put the Advent decorations up. Yeah? <laughs> to, to help us anticipate Christmas. So, we have some magnificent Advent decorations, including some Advent trees all over, <laughs> all over Newman House at this time. So, we're waiting for Christmas. Okay. But third, Advent, we're waiting for Christ to come into our lives right now, today, in a new way. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, through grace, through the sacraments, through prayer, just something new. That the one who comes at the end of time, the one who came at Christmas, he's still alive, you know. This is not some kind of hibernation. He's with us, he's working here, and he wants to do something. And actually, we should be a little bit impatient. That's part of this season. Advent, let me put it this way, is a season where we're given permission to express our impatience with life and with God. This is in the prophet Isaiah today. He says, Why, O Lord, have you left us for so long? Please come back. For the sake of your servants. And he speaks one of the great lines of the Old Testament. Oh that you would tear the heavens open and come down. The Advent cry. Oh that you would tear open the heavens and come down. There is such a longing in him, in in his people, to see God, to see him act. Such an impatience that it is taking God so long. And we're meant to feel that in our own lives and in our church. It's a time, in other words, for us to make our prayer more honest. 
What are you frustrated by? I don't just mean holy things. What are you impatient with? Who are you angry with? What are you angry about? What is eating you up inside? Well look, I'm, I'm giving you permission in the name of the church. Tell God this stuff. Don't keep it to yourself. Just like we heard in the prophet Isaiah. He needs to know what is on your heart. He wants to know. He wants to help you. And part of the process of being helped is being honest and giving it to him. So we're allowed to be impatient. On the other hand, this season, we do need a lot of patience and perseverance. And the season is partly reminding us not to give up. Remember the doorkeeper in the parable. The master's gone away. He could return at any time, but he's taking his time. Each servant has been given a task to do, faithfully, different tasks. And the master trusts them to do it even when I'm not with you, even when I've gone away, even when I'm not checking what you've done, even when I'm not encouraging you. You're big enough, you're grown up enough to be given a task, to be given a life. Each servant is called to do the task faithfully, especially the doorkeeper, to welcome him. Imagine if the doorkeeper were asleep when the master returns. The whole point of his life, and he blew it. Terrifying. And something Jesus, in his gentle but challenging way, is saying we need to avoid. We're not good at waiting patiently. Look, I'm ashamed to say this, this little anecdote now, but it's true, a confession. Yesterday at four o'clock, it's getting dark, I am having tea with my sister. I go to the tube, at Cannons Park Tube. I go up the stairs on the Jubilee Line and it says, next Jubilee Line train, eight minutes. Yeah. And I'm standing there, inside... I'm angry and exasperated and shaking my fist at the, the notice board. Yeah? I'm, I'm, I spend the next seven and a half minutes analysing how can they design a system that has an eight minute gap between tubes. Yeah? <laughs> and the next three tubes, which it kindly tells you about, come at one minute gaps. Who did this? <laughs> yeah? So, I'm ashamed. Yeah? And then I get on the train... And, and the other bit of me looks at the bit of me that's just had the eight minute implosion and thinks, what planet are you on? Um, really, I had to wait for eight minutes. Eight minutes. Okay, there was, there was a little glitch in the programming system maybe. Eight minutes of unplanned waiting and it turned my life upside down only for eight minutes. I did get back on track. Okay. <laughs> It just shows you waiting is difficult in the stupidest of circumstances and it's difficult in the much, much harder circumstances when we're waiting for something that really matters and that is really hard. So the season partly is about being patient, not giving up hope. Spiritually, we may sometimes feel that God is not with us like forgive the facile analogy, like the Jubilee Line train, that we are dark spiritually, dry, sometimes feeling a bit empty or without faith or abandoned. So just to remember this season that our feelings can betray us. Our experience isn't always the best guide to the truth of God's faithfulness. That he is with us, silently, lovingly, and he will return and show his face in small ways, sometimes in big ways. Some of us experience this on the retreat even. And certainly, this is the main point of the gospel, at the end of time. That's these next two weeks, the end of time. Now this is a bit frightening, I hope. I hope you're not feeling complacent about this. We will be called to give an account of what we have done. 
and how we have used the gifts we've been given and how we have fulfilled the vocation we've discovered or how we've been open or not to the vocation that God is calling us to. Have we done the work he has put into our hands? Advent, especially these first two weeks, it's a call to responsibility and honesty. As we say in the Creed, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. It is slightly scary. But it's also consoling. I hope. We know with absolute certainty that he will come back to be with us and put things right in our broken world and in our and my broken lives. As St Paul says, he is faithful. That's it. The last three words of the Pauline reading today. He is faithful. God is faithful. I heard a Cardinal Vincent speak about his new book on hope last week. And he used a lovely phrase. He didn't claim it to be original, but he's a great quoter, as well as a great writer and thinker. He said, look around you at secular hope. When your friend says, oh, I'm, really, I'm feeling really hopeful today. Usually they mean that right now in the present, things are very secure and it's giving me the hope that the future will be okay. Yeah? Solid, solid present, giving me hope that I can move into the future. And Cardinal Vincent said that for the Christian, it's the reverse. It's the absolute knowledge that Christ is coming back at the end of time to renew all things in him and to put things right and that gives us security now for the secular mentality the secure present gives a foundation for hope as we face an insecure future for the Christian the secure future gives a foundation for hope as we face perhaps an insecure present do you see the difference? And do you see, I hope, how much you'd rather have the Christian version of hope because it's so much more hopeful, <laughs> isn't it? So think about how you can have some time of waiting, growing in patience and being open this Advent. Some not doing. It might be in simple secular ways one of the authors I'm reading at the moment, Nassim Nicholas Taleb, this risk analysis who developed the black swan catastrophe theory. Well, he writes that one of his simple life habits is arriving early to events. As he puts it, building in redundancy. A few minutes space so that unexpected things can happen. Encounters, accidents, responses... You might just say in a secular way, serendipity or mindfulness even. As Christians we would say recollection, attentiveness, we would say Advent, I think. We experience this at Worth. Going into the chapel on Friday night. Walking into that holy space with our phones back up at the retreat house. Free, yes a little bit tired on a Friday evening, but sitting there in the darkness and the silence of the church, a silence that you could cut with a knife, a sense of God's presence, and because of that, a sense of possibility. When you're clinging onto your plans, onto the driving wheel, it's very hard for something new and unexpected to arise. But if you can create this Advent, just a little bit of space, silence, recollection, redundancy, it will allow some new possibilities. It will allow God to surprise you. Is this what I'm meant to be doing? Am I in the right place? Is this the path for me? It's not about creating an existential crisis. It's about just for once stopping to listen to your own heart and to listen to God's heart. 
as St Paul says we are waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed at the end of time at Christmas we're also waiting in small and maybe big ways for him to reveal himself to us each day if only we can wait patiently and make the space to see and hear him this Advent.